Hello and welcome to this interview where we will be talking to Mihai Kim Jogo, the founder of the Kenyan organization, My Child Organization, that focuses on children's welfare and rights. Good morning, Mihaki. It's good to see morning, you today. Marisa. Good to see you too. Yeah. So um before we start, could you please tell us an issue that is happening right now in Kenya that people need to be aware of and that is related to your work and to children in general? Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. I think mental health in children is one thing as Kenyans you need to pay more attention to. Uh, we, grow, we grew up in a society where as a kid you could not express you're not feeling okay mentally or having stress per se you're going through issues, there's no that safe space for you to just say how you were feeling and issues are around you for parents because they expect because you're a child, there's nothing that should be bothering you. So uh, as small child organization, we are working towards that to just sensitize parents and tell them, you know what, even kids have mental breakdowns, even kids get into depression. You can have someone even who's even six years old fall into depression. So mental health in children is something that we're really working on and needs to be paid attention to. But mental health is indeed important and it is very important that we are tackling that as well because you notice mm -hmm. that organizations focus on the physical aspects more than mm -hmm. the mental one. So that's yeah. a very brilliant idea of yours. Thank so you. um, let's move on to the second question. So let's talk a bit more about the organization, My Child Organization. Could you please tell us more about it? What is your aim as an organization and why is your work important in Kenya? Mm -hmm. uh, wow, that's beautiful. Smile Child Organization. I think just even saying the name puts a smile on my face without even thinking much about it. So it's a children's rights and welfare organization. We are currently based in Kenya. We're about creating awareness and taking action against child abuse, uh, poverty eradication, and also about mentoring children to be productive members in the society, as well as empowering the community to be agents of change and to be the ones that stand up for children's rights. Additionally, we're also about youth empowerment because our organization is made up of 221 youth volunteers. So we are also undertaking programs that are in line with empowering the young people in terms of skill development, talent, and also accessibility to networks. So Small Child Organization in an art shell is an organization that thrives and wants to have a society full of happy and healthy children who grow up to be very productive adults, free of childhood trauma. Thank you very much, Mihaki. That is very important indeed. Um, I noticed that you talked about child abuse and child labor, for mm -hmm. example. So, and you said that your organization is focused on children's rights and welfare. So could you please mm -hmm. tell us more about the specific issues that you are tackling in my child organization um, and that you are trying to uh, work on um, and in fighting and protecting and defending children's rights? Mm -hmm. Small Child Organization, we're working on abuse, all forms of abuse, with a keen interest in emotional abuse, which is an aspect that the society doesn't pay much attention to. How do you say you're not okay and you have nothing physical to show for it? So the impact of emotional abuse on children is one of our primary focus. We're also about physical abuse when it comes to things like child labor. As an organization with time, we have noticed that these things are directly related. For example, child labor is directly related to poverty. Because as a parent, what you do when you can't provide for your kid, you give them an opportunity to go and work and get paid. So we are also about poverty eradication, uh, children empowerment when it comes to skills. Currently, we are offering skills in primary and high schools where a child can defend themselves verbally uh, can communicate when something happens to them, uh, the art of self-defense in terms of in an empowerment way. So these are skills that we are, we are giving children already and disseminating it also among our members. Additionally, we are also passionate about the environment and our climate 
and just making children be the advocates and stand up for climate action because uh, the world we're living in right now global warming and a lot of things are happening as we're losing our beautiful planet but these are things when we instill in kids from a young age as an organization will they'll grow up to doing it naturally as adults so those are some of the primary focuses we we are having as an organization that's very important and that's very good to know so um yeah. as i know we hacky you are you were miss world kenya second run, runner up in 2021 so congratulations on that that's a great achievement thank you so um i want to ask you how did that help you with your work in the organization <laughs> Uh, being just Miss Val Kenya second runners up actually still current because the rain is for 2022. It's a very interesting platform because one, I get the ability to network with people. Two, just even being part of the program, even during the academic process, it was a growth process for me. At this particular point in my life, I'm taking up opportunities that improve me as an individual and that will also make me a better leader for the organization I'm leading. So it's given me an opportunity to look at uh, issues around the community from a different eye and putting myself in people's shoes or even giving me a scope of getting to access more people who are vulnerable in the community and also opening my mind towards other issues that previously I hadn't even realized. For small child organization, we don't have a specific, like we don't have a fixated mind. As time evolves, as time goes by, we study what is happening in the society and we also adopt to take care of those issues. So for me, just being with Sol Kenya Second and Azap was a platform for me to also speak out about what I love. Yeah. That's very interesting, we had you. I like how you talked about how being Miss World Kenya has improved you personally as well and has yeah, helped you with your organization as well. That's a very yeah. important aspect. Thank you. So um, let's go back now to um, to the issues that are currently happening in Kenya. And I know mm -hmm. there are several new political changes with the new elections in Kenya. Yeah. So um, do you have hope that more reformations will take place to address the issues that you are tackling in your organization? I have faith. The best thing about Kenya, I come from such a democratic country. Like right now, uh, as we are talking, well, the Supreme Court uh, is still ongoing on the election petition of which we had our elections just the other day, last month in August. And it's a democratic country because the rule of law rules, people have their way, the majority have uh, their way, the minority have their say. So I believe that whether the government is in the previous government, the current government, the future government. In Kenya, it's a beautiful space because uh, naturally we have policies, we have the constitution, which is the rule of law and governs how things are dealt with, we have ministries. In as much as we might have a direct leader, the one that is at the head, I feel like the most important is the people that he is leading in the ministries because those are people that come up with policies. So. And then uh, in Kenya, it's right now such a safe space because us as youth are having a platform to speak out, to advocate for issues we love, and a situation and a chance we previously did not have in the previous years. Uh, we were being taught youth are the leaders of tomorrow. But I love it that in Kenya right now, with our government, with our policies, youth are leaders of today. We see people getting elected uh, without even having degree, uh, maybe perhaps not even having extreme qualifications, monetary qualifications as, as it should be in the political avenue. Uh, we see people elected. We even have someone who's elected and is 24 years in Kenya. So to big spaces, uh, zero budget campaigns, that can only tell you how policies are becoming important for us. It's no longer about who, who owns the bag. It's about what are you passionate about and what do you want to do for the nation. It's not about tribes, something we have been be dealing with for a long time. And it's time that we are coming out of that space of tribalism and into uh, manifestos and policies. So I can say, um, sorry, the space is looking beautiful and promising. And young people like us who are running organizations, we have like a lot of opportunities. Growth takes time, but definitely it's gradual and it's definitely coming, yeah. 
it's good that you have hope and that the situation might be getting better. So uh, yeah. that's that's something to look up to. Yeah. So um, I want to know now how to raise people's awareness on the issues that you are addressing in Smile Child Organization. And is there anything that people can do to help, for example, not not specifically on the local level, but also on the international level as well? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really beautiful. One, at Smile Child Organization, are about volunteering. One thing we have come to realize is the importance of human capital, the people that surround you. There's so many skills people possess. As an organization, we are at a point of asking Maisa, what are you good at are you good at marketing yes how about you come and we do marketing for this so right now we are leveraging on networks that will help us for example skills we're also into organizations that would be interested in advocating for children's rights so that we partner together to create awareness on issues surrounding child abuse uh, we're also about poverty eradication where we offer donations to families, especially poor homes, the ones that, because honestly speaking, we are humans, parents are humans. Growing up, we did not know our parents were humans. We thought they're superpower. They were superpower, they had their own superpowers, and they were super women and super men, you know. But as we grow, you understand. Actually, in Kenya, we have memes, you know, and there was, there was one that says, I now understand why my dad was sitting 6 p.m. at night alone, you know, outside, because that is part of adulting, you know. So we have come to realize that as an organization, we cannot talk about change without directly involving and empowering our parents. So we're also doing skills and skill sets uh, improvement in terms of capacity building for parents so that they can be breadwinners for their families. So we are definitely looking to partner and are welcoming any sorts of partnerships with capacity building organizations that are able to help poor communities because abuse most of the time happens in the poor regions, in the slums, in the, in the, in the slums and extremely populated places in the cities where parents have no time most of the time to take care of their children. So we are looking to partner in that direction. Additionally, in kind donations, for example, we encourage students in high schools and primary schools, those who are doing really well by supporting them perhaps financially and also uh, with stationary for them to just have a comfortable time in school. So we're doing uh, in kind donations, we're doing monetary contributions, we are doing skills uh, donation. Uh, we're all about making the world a better place and anything that works in that line is already welcome. But most importantly, we're about the whole society because as an organization, we believe it's our social responsibility to take care of children. Children have no responsibility to take care of themselves. Children have the right to be children. Children have the right for their innocence to be protected. So that is one thing we're really passionate about. And any organizations, partnerships, be it in kind, donation, uh, monetary contributions, and they're aligned in that line, then those are perfect. Uh, that's a perfect fit for a beautiful organization. And this is also like a beautiful support to like <laughs> to have our message being spread away from Kenya. Right now, we are having also partnerships in the US uh, about multi organization and our growth. We are going to conduct research uh, with Pillar Foundation. Pillar Foundation is an organization that advocates for youth-led leadership and supports women in leadership. So we are conducting research in child development and also talent development because those are really, talent is something we cannot ignore in a children's life. Like sometimes as an adult, you're like, I wish my parent really invested in my talent at that particular age because as I said, a kid can only be a kid. They shouldn't think for themselves. It's us to think for themselves. So with Pillar Foundation, uh, with the guidance of Dr. Park, who's the founding, um, he's a founding person at uh, 
Pillar Foundation. We are now starting to conduct research in that line of how we can improve our society, improve parenting, so that these issues of abuse, be it uh, physical abuse, be it sexual, uh, emotional, these are issues that are going to be in the past because uh, we're addressing them as they come. So, yeah. Beautiful words, Muihaki. And I like how you are working with youth as well uh, in order to protect young children. So that's a strong message that you have to deliver. And by the way, yeah, I noticed I noticed the logo in my child organization. So can you go us through the logo bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me let me show you. I think I'll just move like that. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a beautiful logo. So uh, like this logo was designed by one of our volunteers. Uh, that's what I'm telling you. At the organization, it's just a rich space that people are stepping up. I have never seen young people that are passionate about an organization and change and children as much as I've seen uh, in small child organization. I've never seen a young people so passionate about uh, giving their time, their resources, their skills towards bettering the world. And this logo to us means when you look at it, uh, you see an adult's hand holding a child's hand. And it's not, it's not like holding here on the wrist, it's on the palm. Because at the palm is where like everything you touch. So that means you're holding a child's hand, you as an adult are taking the lead. The child entrusts you. We are supposed to give children that space for them to trust us. If they're not okay, if they're okay, the environment has to be safe for them. And for us as Smile Child, even our logo just means we are the ones that are holding the children's hands and not the other way around. Like, put your hand on mine and not me on yours. Yeah. Put your hand on mine. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, there's so much emotions that comes with you know like placing your hand or someone you know sometimes when you are going through something and someone really holds your hand you know there's a lot of good energy that flows there's a lot of positivity and you just feel like everything is gonna be okay so uh, that is the right emotion you're trying to pass as you also interact with children beautiful message from Ihaki. and i and i enjoy talking to you i have faith that your organization might do better in the future you are doing well right now and i hope that you do more and you thank provide you so more for children in Kenya. Uh -huh. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Also, it's been beautiful to hear from you. And I'm also happy that what we are doing, you know, this is how you know what you're doing is impactful when you have people interested and to just listen in and hear what the organization is doing. And in future, we're going global. This is just a starting point for us to understand what is happening because abuse is one that is happening even in the first world and third world countries together. So it's the common issue we have that cuts across the globe. So I'm glad to also be here and to have the opportunity so that people get to know it's not a parent's responsibility to raise a child. It's a society's responsibility to raise a child because the moment you start seeing a child as someone's child, you leave the responsibility out. You won't look out for them. If you see a child as this is my child, this is a community child. This is perhaps a Kenyan. This is someone from somewhere. If you look at them like that, then everything they're doing is going to directly affect you and you're going to really feel the need to be there for them. So that is the mentality and mindset we're also trying uh, to give the society. Beautiful words, Mwihaki. I need to insist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I enjoyed talking to you today and I'm glad you went us through the organization and through the logo as well, which looks very fascinating as well, and through the I issues that you are tackling. It was an interesting discussion. So thank you very much, Muihaki, so for taking the time to do this interview with me. Okay. Thank you too.